Mike. It's Ross Tucker. I'm filling in for Dan. It's always good to talk with you. You know, my sense, Mike, is that you still probably have a couple years left in you, you know, at least as a, as a run-stuffing five technique, the end in a 3-4, if you wanted it. Do you feel like you could still give it a go for a year or two if you wanted to? Hey, Ross, thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think if you're, if you're talking about play on the field, I think I still, I still have it, definitely. I think uh, when you talk about kind of, you know, do I have the motivation to put everything in to another year that I would owe the organization and my teammates uh, and the fans, I don't know if I have that um, and that left. And so I think it's important when you get to that point in life um, you know, if you're going to do something, you got to do it 100%. I just didn't know if I had that. Uh, and then I weighed that out with the injuries and, and the things that you were talking about. And so, uh, you know, it was a tough decision, but it, I think a decision that had to be made, you know. So you just made it on Monday. So here we are in early April. How long have you known? I mean, the season ended a while ago. Did you know right after the season you wanted to let it wait a little bit? Or did it just come to you uh, like this past weekend? Why now? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Uh, I was uh, going back and forth on whether I wanted to retire or keep playing, and um, I had been to I had gotten to the point where I was probably leaning towards going back. Uh, and then my wife, you know, she kind of brought me back down to reality and said, "Look, you're dealing with all these injuries. You've had the concussions. Your your, your level of play is not at the level it was at. You." Um, uh, you know, you, you just, uh, you know, and then she was saying, I don't want to uproot the family and move out to Kansas City again. There's just a lot of factors that I really wasn't thinking about just because I know what the road uh, towards football looks like. I know what to expect. And, and this road in retirement, I'm not as, you know, I'm not as sure. You know, I've been playing football for 18 years, so I don't, I don't know what this road looks like. And so, uh, so my wife kind of brought me back down to reality and kind of laid it out. So once we talked through all that and, and she told me how she felt, I just said, okay, you know, it, it pushed me into retirement. Or not pushed me into retirement, but I, I said, okay, this is, the, this is the correct decision at this point. We're talking with Mike DeVito, uh, played nine years in the NFL. He is the latest in what seems like a bunch of guys that, in my opinion, still have the ability to play in the NFL at a pretty high level deciding to, to hang up the cleats. You know, last week, Mike, it was your former teammate, DeBrickishaw Ferguson, you know, yeah. obviously Calvin Johnson, Marshawn Lynch, uh, even my former teammate, Logan Mankins, I still think could have played pretty well for a year or two. Do you think that this is a trend, Mike? Yeah, it, it, se it definitely seems that way. I'm not sure uh, if there's a common theme towards, you know, what guys' motivations are uh, for retiring, but – but you're, you're definitely right. It's definitely something to look at. Guys are, are retiring earlier. I think that, you know, the more research that comes out on the, on the injuries, um, and, and you know what you sign up for. You, I mean, you know, Russ, it's a violent game, and, so, uh, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But I think when the information comes out about, you know, some of the, the you know, it's a, it's a little bit more damaging than we thought it was, you know, that can, that you start to think about things a little differently, especially when it comes to your brain, because if you hurt your knees, you hurt your shoulders, you can always recover from that. But, you know, the more you hurt, you know, your, your, your head, you know, that changes who you are as a person. And so you got to weigh that into account. Not that that's what guys were thinking about, but uh, uh, I'd be curious to see what guys' motivations were. But you are, you're seeing guys retire a, a lot earlier. So it's fair to say, Mike, that all the new information coming out about CTE just based on what you're saying, it sounds like was absolutely a, a pretty significant factor in your decision. It was, it was one of the factors. Um, you know, I think the, the most significant factor, though, was I think I, I played pretty well this year. And, and the one thing that I've seen with defensive linemen is I, you, don't, I, you don't really see a gradual drop-off in play. It's like they're playing well, playing well, and they get to the point where they're, you know, it's just it's done. You know, and then they stink. And so I don't know where I'm at, but I don't. I was I was happy with my play last year. I came back from the the Achilles injury, and so uh, I think the biggest thing was I, I don't want to rob my teammates and the organization and the fans, uh, and I don't want to put a bad product out there. Uh, and so I think that that was really the the motivating the, the major motivating factor when I really kind of sat back and reflected on it. But then obviously secondary to that. Um, 
is the is the is the concussion stuff because yeah, you got to be really careful, uh, and especially you know the new research is seeing it's affect, affecting guys a lot down the line. How tempted were you, Mike, to try to get that tenth year though? Ten sounds cool, man. It's a round number. How, how how tempted were you to try to get that ten next to your name? Oh man, I'll tell you so much. Bro. I I really was, and and uh, I know that there's just something about that. But then as I, again, as I kind of detached emotionally from that a little bit and kind of looked at it as rationally as I could, I was thinking, am I going to put myself through this and go against all these other things that we've just talked about? Because I want to get, you know, I want to be able to say I did 10 versus 9. You know, but you're right. But there's something about 10, like a, a solid decade. You know, it, it just sounds better than 9. I don't, I don't know. 10, 10 sounds legit. It really, dude, 9 is legit, especially the way you played it. Uh, you had an unbelievable career with the Jets and then with the Chiefs. I don't think people appreciate, you know, what guys like you, any guy – that plays nine, ten plus years and laces it up every Sunday in the trenches. Those are the guys that I look at and just think. I mean, what Brick did with never missing a play is just oh. insane. I mean, I try to explain it, Mike. How crazy is that to you that the dude never missed a play? It's it's incredible. The Brick show that's the ultimate Iron Man right there. I mean, to to not miss a play, I can't remember the number of reps. I think it was close to eleven thousand reps <laughs> uh, straight that he played. I mean, it just it's unbelievable. And I was I was fairly healthy, and and I did a lot to work on my health. And I still, you know, especially after years five, six, seven, eight, you know, eight, I missed all of eight. Um, but there was always I always knew, okay, I'm I'm probably not. You know, you shoot to make it through sixteen games. Uh, but, but you're going to, you know, you figure, okay, I, might, I probably won't make it through all 16 games without getting injured. Uh, and, then, and then on top of that, to not miss a rep, it's just, it's just incredible. It's incredible. I mean, it's all, like, it, it, I don't know, that's definitely a Hall of Honor, like Hall of Fame statistic right there, right there by itself because that's an incredible feat. And I don't know if anybody outside the game would, could really grasp it. You know, hey Mike, what are, are are guys in the locker room? Are they talking about this brain stuff, the head stuff? Is this something that's talked about in the locker room, or just something that you guys do with your families at home? You know, I think it, I think it's talked about in the locker room a little bit, but I think it has. I think it has. I gotta be careful, but I think it has more of an effect on our families because when my wife is watching sixty minutes, or you know, and all these different shows that are putting out, you know, the research for the CTEs. And the, and the brain trauma and the stuff that they're, they're, you know, they're just starting to come around and understand now. Um, I think that that, that is some, in my, at least in my case, it was, you know, it, it was a little bit more added pressure from the, from the outside coming in because, uh, because your family wants, you know, I'm not, if I was just responsible for myself, it's one thing, but being responsible, you know, to take care of my wife and my kids and be here for them, right. you know, the capacity where I can interact with them. Uh, you know, is, is, is important. And so uh, I think, you know, when they start to see it and it starts to make the news and make the movies like it's been, uh, I think, it, you know, there's a little bit more external pressure there. Hey, any idea what you're going to do next? That, you know, John Dorsey, our, our general manager, had a, had a great uh, – he, 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 I was talking to him and he said, look, you can't uh, – you're going to want to jump into something right away. He said, because of, that's just, your, you know, your nature. What are you doing, you know, playing football? You know how it is. Or else you just want to get – you know, you want to get back to work. And so uh, he said, you've got to be able to step back for a second and find something that you're passionate about. He said, don't just go jumping into something to jump into something. I thought that was great advice. So my wife's pregnant. She's due in November. So I'm going to take time till then. That's kind of like my goal time and, and, and spend time with, with my family and, and help her through that process and then kind of figure out what I'm passionate about and what's next because I really don't have any idea right now. Well, that is great news. Congratulations, and thanks for calling in today. Of course, Ross. Thank you so much for having me, and I appreciate it. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.